welcome you to the special call board meeting. Uh, our Jack Price State Board of Trustees. Our first item on the agenda is uh, considering an appropriate for the appointments. Uh, Dr. Hudson. Attached you have a list of professional uh, personnel for employment with the district. We have Malcolm Bronson, Kelly Davis, being a nurse at primary, uh, Samantha Francis, secondary CHFU, Amanda Halford, special education teacher, Halford, uh, Summer, Lamone, I know this ain't correct because I just met it today, first grade teacher at Few, Donna Martin at Parnell, Kelly McGill at Few, Samantha Peters at Parnell, Marlena Fetabell, uh, Elizabeth Rio, our teacher at Jasper Junior High, Randy Shoemake at Jasper High School, and Kim Washington at Few. So at this time, Administration recommends the Board of Trustees approve the recommended recommendation for professional personnel. We have a recommendation from administration. We have a motion. So moved. Uh, second. Mr. Webb and seconded by Dr. Kimmack. Uh, any questions? Uh, all of these have passed certification? Yes. Yes. Uh, and I see uh, Coach Barbara. We've got two coaches. Uh, those will be in. Um, Shoemaker is going to be girls basketball, <coughs> and let's see, where's the other one? Bronson. Bronson. Um, Malcolm is a he passed certification test, so he was hired with us last year. He would be at the junior junior high, but he was working at Parnell because of his certification. He has to be with PE. He last year he was working with kids at the alternative program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Comments? All in favor, show your right hand. All opposed, same sign. 7 0. Uh, next action is uh, considering appropriate approving an additional school resource officer. Presented by Dr. Hudson. I was approached by Police Chief Gerald Hall about uh, talk to him about an additional school resource officer uh, to support the district and feel like there's a need for this side so that uh, there is someone to support the high school. We also feel there should be someone to support on this side of town. And we want to house them at the Jasper Junior High and they will support Darnell, uh, this side of town, as, as well as support the SRO. Uh, one of the things we also would pay uh, police officers to uh, work the games and other things. We would love to have our people since they know our kids. Uh, also, Gerald Hall presented me with some information. Uh, some publications that we are afforded to that's free from the um, from the law publication, and these are things that we can utilize at all levels for training and uh, education with our kids on, on how to the, it range from color books and how to talk to strangers, not to talk to strangers, excuse me, <laughs> not how to talk to strangers. <laughs> uh, there are some things about stop the violence. Um, so there's a lot of publications because one of the things the school resources office is supposed to also besides being a police officer is also supposed to educate our students and that's what we want to use that especially at the lower levels to have a presence because we don't want our kids to have a fear of law enforcement. So at this time administration recommends approval of hiring an additional school resource officer. We have a uh, recommendation from administration. Entertain a motion. So moved. Uh, Dr. Kamak. Second by Ms. Stewart. Any questions, comments? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. 7 0. Uh, item C is uh, considering appropriate approved contracted painting services for summer projects. Presenter, Ms. Porter. Uh, we received quotes of individual paint projects from Dan Robertson, Lewis, and Spending, and Zero Fellows. There's actually three different sections on your uh, uh, agenda items. The first one is exterior. The quotes were obtained based on just painting the outside, um, and then I don't recommend quotes on just painting the inside on select campuses. Um, and then um, the, camp, the original request that the campuses had uh, submitted as part of the maintenance projects. <clears throat> if you 
you will note that the one on the exterior for the field house does include the interior and exterior. <clears throat> the exterior um, would be 91500 and the new San Fargo was $98,500. Um, for the interior, it was 112978400 um, The campus request was $119,700 uh, under the Blue Center and then for all the only bid on one hour was $42,750. Um, the Warkshire really wanted to have some discussion on this. Regarding whether it would be the exterior or the interior or the combination of them, or just the canvas things, and Mr. Brown is also here to answer these questions. Well, we don't necessarily have a recommendation. I think the, the available option for recommendation to approve the exterior only projects, the interior only projects, certain projects. Or a combination of things, but you know we were uh, we present the information to you so that uh, we can have a discussion about where we're going to go. Of course, we also have um, Mr. Bryan here to kind of uh, clarification of some things because he was the first important person in regards of looking at the uh, the quotes, uh, and so we wanted to make sure that whatever decision we make that uh, you know we can put it back to uh, the will of the board on what we're going to go from here. So when it says campus request, it's basically projects that each facility has identified as a priority. Yes, and I, I can get that list. Do you have that list there. right here? Can we get a list. copy of that? It's in there. Okay. Okay. Can you package the one step together, the first one, the next Yes, it's the last one. Okay. So these were all the special projects, and I think that was the initial when we saw the 163. We talked about the, uh, the bud. I mean, the budget workshop, um, certain people want certain things painted, uh, and so not everything was included in that, just little things here and there. And this has been the trend pattern, from my understanding, for the last couple of years that right running. Yes, and so that there hasn't been any full, complete painting, it has been just kind of spot jobs here and there. I guess uh, just looking at you. Combine interior, interior, and the uh, campus request. Does the campus request include any of the interior painting? Yes, I don't think there's any. Um, there may be a couple different things, like for instance, a uh, few put on the front gated area, so that would not be included in there. There's only a couple minor one things that I would consider uh, that was exterior. Uh, most of the stuff was interior, like the cafeteria or cabinets, somewhere here and there. So some of those things would be included because if you include if you're painting the interior of the building, I don't believe they're going to paint the lock. I mean the cabinets. Uh, some of the special projects were painting lockers or painting uh, cabinets. So those things would not be necessarily included. In so the there's interior. no duplication of there's it no duplication in the interior no, versus some. No, no, shouldn't be. There there are a few because uh, when you look at the list of the description from each like of the campuses, paint you'll all see paint. The hallway, um, little hall lounge need to be repainted. So those type of deals will be in there if you paint all the interior. Um, but then we look at some other things, um, like here's one paint the trash containers carton red. So that would not be included in the interior. Those were the special projects that they put in there. Those are interior <coughs> And the cafeteria junior. Yeah. They're interior. Oh. Trash can, but I wouldn't necessarily believe that if we. Well, they're inside. Okay. <laughs> and they're already painted. And they're already painted red. Right? No, yes, but I would think if we. They're green. They're, they're green. green. They're green. But if we ask the. Except a couple of them. The high school is red. That's the one I'm talking about. But if, uh, but if we ask them to paint the interior of the junior high school, they're not going to paint the uh, trash, trash can. <laughs> I wouldn't expect them to paint the trash can. So, Ronnie, does the, uh, on the campus request... Those campus requests are turned in by the principals at each campus, things that they wanted done on their campus, and that's the way we've kind of been doing it for several years, just taking the request and pricing them and doing something up for each campus. But uh, 
so with that on the campus request is uh, is that going to include like sheetrock repairs and yes. things like that? So yes. you would have to repair that before you paint. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So basically you gotta if you look at it, you have to approve both of those. So then we're looking at if you field house include exterior, if you're looking at the last two, the sixty seven hundred for the field house includes exterior and interior. Central Kitchen is two thousand includes just the, the central, twist. Uh, the central kitchen was paint doors and the cooler floor needed to be repainted. That was the only thing that was for the central kitchen. So if you uh, combine the uh, the last two items, you have 67 field house, 2000 central kitchen, junior high, 44 and 36, that's 80,000, Parnell, 68, 33, 101,000, 13,000 for few, that's 202,000. Is uh, the high school is 40, 42, 750 campus request and 94 for a painting? What would you recommend there? Both or? I would just do what was requested by the principal. Uh, on all That's, of that or just the, would you request, would you do only, would you recommend well, as a, as, as only an, doing what the principal requested? As an example, there were, was a lot of the, a lot of the painting was done last year. We did some last year. If we paint everything again, uh, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that, but it seems wasteful. Okay. Uh, that's why I've been letting the principals pick and choose what they wanted to paint every summer. Yes, sir. And this summer wound up being a lot of requests. Okay. Uh, Dr. Scusa let us spend, what, what did we spend, 15 last summer total on painting? So it's, it's kind of over the last few years, there hasn't been a whole lot of painting done, but... Uh, there, there is a lot of requests this summer. Do you believe that uh, there are a lot of additional needs outside of what the principals have asked for in the interior painting, or do you I, think this I will be know. sufficient? I, I don't know. I, I haven't, uh, I haven't gone item by item down that list and looked at everything personally. I sent the painters to look at it. Are there any principals here? Do you know? In junior high's case, what we put was the most glaring needs. Say we had painted the, the front hallway three years ago, it needs a new coat. But the brand new hallway doesn't need a brand new coat because it's only two years old. And so you think your list you provided is sufficient? It's not just what's been requested? Yes. I said the high school. Is that adequate for your campus? I said the high school we've got on the campus request, it says paint all walls, classrooms, hallways, all walls. So is that also included in the bid over there for Williamson to uh, Williamson, or I'm sorry, furlough, furlough to paint the interior? So it's, that's, that's the duplication I was asking about. No, I mean that's uh, kind of interesting because you he did both jobs. So he looked at this original. He had the same list, and so his quote to us was forty-two thousand. And my and instructions he, to him was to go back and add on to his original number whatever was not on that list. Okay, so that would be... Or the second two. number. So, so the, the, the 60... 94. 94 is for everything? Is for everything, or is that... Gyms, oh, gyms, the whole work. So that's, 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 that's totally everything. Everything inside that's had paint on it before. Yeah. Okay. So the, uh, the campus request from the principal comes up to 162, 450. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I know we did an amendment to the budget last uh, board we meeting, we and we got plenty of money. In the 50, but that's not going to. We were only anticipating about 92,000 more for painting. So um, if we do this, one of my people would need to do is do another budget transfer. Which we got to pay this year. Which we're way ahead on budget, so we yes. should be fine. We should be. And we have enough money throughout the budget. Um, so, because we're, we're already anticipating 600000 if we were to spend everything, but we're not going to spend everything. So, uh, we're probably going to break even. So, we may go into from else just a little bit, but as far as increasing the budget, we wouldn't have to. We just need to move it from a different function. Which we moved uh, 250 from instruction, and we were still at a projected million dollars. I mean, we were going to be 700000 still, even moving that 250 out of instruction. 
Well, so. we still have a lot of things we have to pay for our summer school and So what is your, so you're, you're projecting breaking it? Uh, right now I haven't had a chance to look at it based on the actual themes data that come in, what we're actually earning versus what we're going to pay. Because I was projecting very similar to what we came out last year. So uh, I'm going to make a motion. Uh, then we can, if we get a second, then we can answer. So I'm going to make a motion that we uh, do the 162450 for campus request. No, second. Mr. Duran uh, made the motion. Ms. Stewart seconded. Any questions or comments? Yes, so you're, just to confirm, you're talking about the right hand. Yes. Over here, right? Yes, the uh, uh, campus request. Following Mr. Brian's uh, lead that he would recommend doing the principal side first. I would like clarification too. So go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I just had a quick question. So these requests, you know, John, how did we go about getting these requests? Did we get oh. with the teachers? How did Yeah, how we send we up? send out an email to the staff and say, you know, any painting requests, please turn those in, any repairs that you need, you know, baseboards, um, get dented or pulled off sometimes. So we send that out in April, we send another one towards the end of April, and usually these are due in May sometimes. We compile the request and we do walk arounds and make sure any glaring needs add that to it, and then send that to Mr. Brian and Mr. Coulter. Okay. Are you confident that everything that's on here is all that you need for right now? Um, I mean, there's always extra need. Extra <laughs> extra need. <laughs>
uh, we're going to have those spots here and there and those other little pieces. Um, like I said, this is, uh, we, we've got a lot of great quotes in. I'm also concerned about timing. Um, exactly. I'm not really sure, um, and Ronnie probably can tell me if they can really do all the work, quality work, in this short period of time. Because uh, we talked about, you know, in the future we will do some painting, but it'll be throughout the year. And so, you know, it may take them four months to paint the Parnell, but that'll be after hours from five until two in the morning, uh, wing by wing. But the great, the benefit of that is that you can, um, Mr. Davis can go in and say, hey, you know, I kind of missed this area, this wasn't painted correctly, this wasn't to our specification, and they can do that versus once they get done in the summer, you may not see it again. And then um, Ms. Saibo might not realize that this is a problem until she took flight by two, two, two weeks later. So on, on the bid for the exterior, what all was included in that bid? So they're going to repair everything on the exterior, the soffits, all that. Is that part of that bid? Pretty much. Dr. Hudson and I rode around and looked and, and pointed out to each other the different things. And pretty much everything on the outside that could be painted, no brick work. Necessarily. Well, not so much painted. You said that it needs repairs. I mean, are we just going to paint over a problem? Uh, well, uh, and the repair part I'm thinking about is the stucco at junior high. It's kind of got some holes in it that been knocked in it, and repairing stucco is not that big a deal. So that would be that's part of the paint. That's yeah. part of the paint. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I'd like to add this. I don't think uh, to respond to what you said about the exterior. Personally, I don't have a problem with creating curb appeal, and would like to see it myself. But I don't think the timing should be ahead of our children's environment. You know, my daughter has gone to Parnell and to junior high, and um, she sat in a classroom with no air conditioner. She has uh, <coughs> sat at a, a lunch table with a garbage can sitting on the end of the table with stuff dripping out of the ceiling. Uh, our, the environment our children are sitting in and the teachers are teaching them it's not acceptable. I agree. In its and current I'm not state. That. And and I just believe that right now we should visit this first, interior painting, and then maybe come back and revisit the exterior. Why can't we do both? Yeah. Let me ask you so, uh, why can't we do both? Budget. His heart. Yeah. Uh, if you take uh, and maybe again Mr. Bryan is when I'm looking at the field house. And I see where it says down here, field house exterior includes pricing for both inside and outside. So the exterior here on the field house is 12.5. Campus request is 67. That uh, so the 12.5 I guess is just painting 6700, repairing everything. 6700 was whatever Daryl requested. Okay. 12.5 paints inside and out. Okay. It's, uh, I think that was a little bit more. Oh, somebody, when well, your secretary sent it in, somebody said, <laughs> 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 That's what I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure if we're, if we're getting, just to try to get a round about number, uh, just to be any duplication, because, um, like And there the, could be some in that, as an, yeah, and that example would be some of that, but, uh, yeah. Because I'm thinking, um, my, my thought is exterior, if uh, if we if uh, you looked at the exterior of the painting, you said, okay, at the field house in our uh, junior high, Parnell, Pew, and the high school, and take out central kitchen, technology, administration, CTE, DOI, it comes up to about 60675 You add that to the other, so you're about $223,000, $225,000 for the exterior and the campus needs. Kind of that close? Yeah, I would add, I mean, the, the exterior is, um, if you pick and choose, whoever has the, the cheapest bid, it was 83 to 25. Yeah. Well, the, he's, only, he's only looking at just the campuses and the field house and, and removing these, anything that's central office. Central kitchen, tech, admin, admin CT, DOI. Well, CTE, well, CTE, uh, my thought, yeah. Well, I was thinking that building was brand new, but that's the old CTE building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and then I think 
We have fun balance. Why don't we do it all? I mean, why can't we have fun balance? And then exterior, we can paint that at any time. And that's what my thought was, is, get, is making the motion is you do your campus request, get that done ASAP, and then we look at what is remaining. And it'll probably give you a better chance of finding a good deal. Because then they would be able to go back in and say, well, we didn't fix this, we didn't paint that, and we were the numbers. I've, I've got a, a, a pretty good feel. The, uh, the low bid uh, guy at Parnell thinks he can get a big enough crew to get that done before the teachers come back. Um, then the high school guy thinks he can get his done before the teachers come back. Two different contractors. And then what was left might be junior high because few's more wallpaper than paint. Uh, and if, if we pick and choose what we want to do at junior high, we might put both of them in there even after the teachers come back a little while and possibly get all the into interior painting done before school starts. And if, we, and if, if we, we can start right away. And if we approve that campus needs now and try to get that done before August 31st, anything we don't get done before August 31st is going to be carried over and is an amendment to next year's budget anyway. Yes, unless you put it for it. In the next year. So either way, you're going to, if you don't you find that in the budget, or we have to go into fund balance either way. So. I still have some more questions for you. So I'm reading this proposal. And it says you're saying they're going to do repairs to the stucco. It says make reasonable stucco repairs. So you're saying that that stucco over there is you know pretty bad. So is that just going to be reasonable uh, work, or is that going to be come I back? Would, where I, would, get I wouldn't characterize it as pretty bad. It's got some spots in it that need some help. But I, I wouldn't still wouldn't care. It looks bad because it needs paint, but there are some spots that need repair. Yeah. Okay. So do you think we're gonna? get a supplement built to us with them billing us for more repairs? Do you think this is going to be fine? I think it's going to be fine. So Mark, your motion was to not do exterior? My motion was to uh, do the campus request, get that done. And again, I say because we get that done, that's primarily interior. Uh, correct? Primarily. Primarily. The interior. Then we get that done. Then we get go back, have uh, the painters or whoever come back and look at what they didn't get done and with Mr. Bryan. And then we'll have a better understanding of is that or what. And that, that would expedite my, the yeah. uh, process of getting this done by school starting, right? Well, that, or by that, that was my... It, that was important to me, getting it done before school started. Um, that August August thirty first date uh, for changing the budget that, that's that's Miss Horton's problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, Ronnie, if we ask if we ask for some reason we decide we want to do the exterior and the campus request, since these are the same painters, that would pretty much negate getting done by the time school starts right. to try to do it all. Right. Okay. Right. But the majority of the outside stuff could be done during the school year. Right. They could start after yeah. the campus. Yeah. Typically we have our best painting weather in October. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Outside painting weather. Yeah. And right. we probably can all schedule that when they actually get to do that. You can do it all at once, but then schedule it out. So that it doesn't create problems. Because we need to, we need to let the campus system, especially those things, especially when you have those events, so that they are aware ahead of time. So right, let the kids know which doors they need to use and all that stuff. Parents. Yeah. So, Dr. Hudson, what is what is your recommendation Sorry. to us? <laughs> <laughs> But I think that we, there's the, the schools definitely have some needs. Um, I'm, I'm all for if we are 
trying to exclude the um, central office places, and that's fine by me. I think that ultimately there are some, some definite needs. Um, I, I feel like the, I don't want to rush the painting on the inside. It, my reasoning why is because I want it done properly. And I think that Summer, this, this is only my opinion, this is Gerald Hudson speaking, um, that I don't want that to be rushed because that's important. I think the, uh, there are certain aspects when you try to get all of it done correctly in a short period of time. There seems to be mistakes and everything else, but I, you know, I'm, I'm confident that Ronnie, I, myself, and the principal will be able to check to make sure these things are done correctly. Um, but I, I see the need for <coughs> having some of the central office things on there. Okay. Mr. Brian, what what are the chances that if we don't do the exterior, that those bids will go up? If we put it off, I think we'd be fine. Well, how how long are you talking about waiting, huh? October. I don't maybe September. I think we'll be fine until October. I think they'll stay the same until October. So, about with these contractors, I mean, how many people did we bid this job out to? The, those are only two I asked to get in, that I asked numbers from. Why is that? Just those are the only two of. I think quality and dependability more than yeah. anything else for this well, area. Yeah. Um, and, and there could be some painters around that <coughs> feel a crew that I don't know. Well, not I so just much knew these crew, two could, you know, someone that could do the work at this level of that. I just knew these for. two contractors could get a big enough crew to do a lot of work. Yeah. And they are local. Yes. And, that's and, and we also have to define what kind of paint we expect to use in the buildings and what color so that everyone agrees to use the same type of colors and paint so we can get back to a, a standard of, of, of colors uh, in Jasper. Still a, I agree with that. And that's one thing we talked about. The, yes, I'm pointing you wrong. Um, we talked about so we sit down and make sure something is documented, documented on what paint and what color, what all these different things we have. Just a brand is what you're talking about. Though. The brand, everything else, so that every time that they're painting or repairing anything else, they use the same paint so that it all matches up. So you don't have an oil base and a, you know, all this. Yes. I'm going to say that I'm going to say this, and this will be my last comment. Uh, sitting, I'm just thankful that we have a superintendent and a board that's wanting and desiring to make these kinds of changes because. Historically, recent past, fell on deaf ears. So, thank you. Yeah. Uh, my last question is, as far as the exterior, you know, with us wanting to do it right now, are you, are you saying the plan that you want to do it before we do the inside? Is that what no. Saying? Actually, what I said is, well, I'm just doing asking. something is, is better than nothing, and right I appreciate here. whatever we do. My take and my background being what it is, is it, it, it goes to this point. I, two or three years ago, there was discussion of putting new flooring in Parnell. Whether you know it or not, the roof leaked like a sieve every time it rained. Why put new flooring? You know, if the roof is still going to leak. And, and so it's just some of those concerns of mine that if, if we follow up with interior work immediately with exterior work, that's great. But if we were going to get in a position where we take care of the campus requests, the interior needs, and we're two or three years down the road getting back to the exterior, we're, we're not two or three years behind. We're another five, six, seven years behind because of, of just decay and, and the weathering of the exterior. Let me ask this. Yes, sir. I've been working here for 15 years, and I don't remember any outside paint done other than doors. Exactly. Right. That's all that's been done. Right. Well, I would like uh, making the motion. I would like uh, is if we are sure that we do the interior campus needs first, then I will amend my motion because I made the motion and I can amend it. Yes. But I will say in my motion I will say that it must be assured we do the interior campus needs first. Okay. You're going to amend your motion to I include the exterior? I amend my motion to include the campus request and the exterior painting 
that uh, and I, I want to say I want to take out uh, I want to say the four campuses and the field house. Take out central kitchen, <coughs> technology, administration, uh, CTE and DOI. Well, CTE is actually interior work. Okay. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the old yeah. building, right? So yeah, that's some interior work. Yeah, that's the so the CTE is kind of a misleading thing to come to the building. So to clarify the end, it's not it's okay. Yes. So to clarify is I want to amend my motion to have a campus request and the field house, junior high. Parnell and the high school exterior and added, view. And view and view. added to that motion with the assurance that we will do campus needs first. Interior needs. Interior, Interior campus, campus needs first. Okay. Second. 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 And then third. Vicky seconded. <laughs> third. I made the motion. I had to amend it. And Vicky, you have to second. I'll second it. You second it. So. So any questions or comments to that motion? And we're clear. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Sorry, when can we start? That is my next question. <laughs> yes. We have the tier to get this, can we start immediately? Can we get a PO by Friday? <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. I've got a generator. One sixty two. One sixty two four fifty. Was that right? What? One sixty two four fifty, right? Oh wait, two twenty five. Okay. So, order, please. Okay. Uh, if we can move on to administrative reports. Uh, next one is dress code surrounding districts. Presenter, Dr. Hudson. Access, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. So, we had the board ask us uh, about the dress code, and so we had to do some uh, additional uh, research and so we want to present some information to the board understanding that we would like to get some, uh, some guidance as we um, put it back into the code of conduct for July uh, to have the code of conduct approved in the handbook. Information in that packet that you've been provided is uh, some of the information that you can see in the front page is just a very general comparison between some of the local districts, the local district being Newton, Perkyville, Woodville, and Brooklyn, basically surrounding our school district. There are a couple other districts included in this packet. I mean, uh, what I've done is I've just taken a snapshot basically of their, their student handbook and their dress code accordingly uh, so that we can have some comparisons. I know some of the concerns were that uh, the strictness of the, the standardized dress is something that is of concern at this point. Uh, what I've done also, I've included a little bit of information for you at the top. It gives you a little bit of a, a history of why that was done back the years ago that it was done and some of the concerns that are currently existing. And what we want to do is provide you with the information so that you could have a comparison, if you will. Like I said, that front page is just a generalized look as to compare to what we currently have. You can have the actual documentation in the following pages. And as I said, uh, those districts, as well as uh, Silsby, Carthage, and West Orange Stark, which are comparatively sized districts, demographics, and whatnot. And so it uh, gives you a little bit of an idea. So it should give you seven districts to look at. If you're interested, if you have questions, we can certainly field any questions that you have. Uh, we do have some principals who were uh, involved with the situation back years ago when that happened. And we can uh, certainly answer any questions or try to answer any questions you may have. Ms. Coleman, what do you see as probably the, the biggest difference between, let's say, our dress code and Brooklyn? The biggest difference is just the specifics of what the students have to wear. As you can see, it kind of gives some parameters of, of what they can wear. It doesn't necessarily spell out khaki pants, you know, the type of collared shirt or the type of coat. Ours goes 
pretty specific in what they can and can't wear by the, by the letter of the law. Uh, and I think some of the concerns there are is, is actually the implementation, the, the uh, policing of it, and all that stuff. And so what, what you can see here in some of the other districts is basically what we had prior to what we currently have. What happened in that situation was is it became, clothes became more baggy. Of course, you came, people became more aware of uh, the threats, the safety and security threats at campuses. Uh, there, was a, there was a video going around that the, the students showed up at school, and of course it was, it was set up. But they had a shirt tail that was out and baggy pants and pulling out weapons left and right, and you just walk up and look at it. So part of that situation stemmed from that. There was an incident at one of our schools, at Jackson High School, the last day of school, that kind of spurred it on. Some of you may recall that. And so that spurred on the, the push to do this more restrictive dress code. So making that long story a little bit shorter, as I said, uh, ours is a little bit more restrictive with, the, with their designated colors, the styles, and that. As you can see in these, it gives a generalized look. It does cover some things like bare midriff, rips in the pants, belts around the waist, no sagging pants, so on and so forth. You know, a little bit more uh, revealing clothing. It, it kind of addresses that. Some of that, and I'm going to tell you this too, some of the, the rationale behind when this was done earlier was because also that what, with the standards being strict, it was easier for the teachers and those to determine whether it was a violation or not. So that was part of it as well. So you can see the yin and the yang of it, if you will, uh, with, the, with the dress code the way it is. Uh, this way it's going to probably put a little bit more... Uh, and principals, please help me if, if I'm going wrong here, to make a little bit more burden on the principals to determine, because the teachers in some cases, it was difficult for them to determine what was in dress code and what wasn't. So you can see there's a, there's a fine line there which way you want to go. It does give us some opportunity. And I think some of, the, some of the concerns that have been voiced that we've heard is that in some of the neighboring schools, we're losing some students to go to neighboring schools. Some things we've got to consider is, again, like the like, Dr. Hudson says we want to be a district of destination. And if we are going to understand at the time, so we have to review everything that we have and make a determination whether it's right for us at this time. As a proponent of the dress code before, eight years ago, when we needed it, do you believe today we need that dress code, or do you believe the trend has faded itself out? Well, if you see there are fewer schools that have done that. When we did the research at that point, there were a number of schools that are going to it because of the trend of safety and security in the schools. Right. And of course, like I said, the video that was out showed how dangerous it could be. You know, it was after Column 9 and everything else. And so you understand where the, the, the security would come from and where the concern would come from the general public. <coughs> for me, I think it's probably more of a question for the principals to determine because right. they see it on the day-to-day -day in our teachers. Because they see it on the day-to-day. -day. You know, we reacted. We had an opportunity. We had a, We had a uh, some concerns, and we developed what was requested at the time. And of course, things change, and people understand that. And so, again, it, it, and it helps with the parents. We have to have parental involvement too, because we don't want those kids to go out wearing something that is way out of dress code, and then it's our responsibility when they show up. So, I yeah, think that, that these guys would probably be. I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear from some of y'all. Mm -hmm. John, please. Um, well, when, when we went to standardized dress, you know, there was that issue at the high school that year. Um, and it was just mainly a, a gang issue with some kids wearing certain things, and, and this was sought to do that. I think it served its purpose. Um, I don't think we have those same issues um, now, but even if with a dress code, not a standardized dress, but a dress code, you can address any gang affiliation. Um, baggy clothes can still be addressed in a dress code. Um, and then, of course, everything else. Which would be inappropriate slogan. Yeah, and you're going to have a dress code anyway. I mean, you've got to have some kind of a dress code at school. You just don't necessarily have to have a standardized dress. But I think back in 08, I think it was, when we did that, um, yes. you know, it, it served its purpose. And, and it was probably needed to I think it's a case of, you know, looking at these different dress codes, you know. With these school districts that surround us that do not have standardized dress other than Newton, we don't see the issues that that we've talked about trying to prevent. They don't have the same thing. So my, I think, so we're not so much comparing apples to oranges as Granny Smith apples to Red Delicious apples. It's really because these districts are very similar. 
I mean, we're, I mean, the demographics are always going to be a little bit different, but, you know, is it, the question I have is, is it more trouble than it's worth, and is it, you know, being a destination district, is this, this is something I think that would, would be a big part of that. That's just my take. And I think it would lift the morale of both teachers and the children. I, I, the children hate the dress code, regardless of from what they tell me. Well, and the parent, I mean, the teachers don't seem real happy with it either. Well, they find something Well, and, yeah. and I would just, uh, doing the research, uh, just when I was a recovering high school principal, and we also <laughs> went through the process of uh, looking at standardized dress, and I've kind of shared my story that uh, we didn't get it passed, but then I had the opportunity to go to a campus that was standardized dress, and I was very excited. And unfortunately, when I went on campus, it was the sloppiest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> because in my mind, when I think of standard, I wear a bow tie. That's okay. So, you know, my expectations of standardized dress is different from, you know, at least iron your clothes every once in a while. Well, there's another side to that, too, yeah. in that you can put standardized dress on all the kids, but these kids don't have standardized bodies. Yeah. True. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes, that's yeah. a big part of morale. And, that, and then the other thing I will say is that regardless of standardized dress or non standardized dress, you're still going to have dress code issues. You're never going to get away from dress code issues. Uh, kids going to push the envelopes. When you talk about holes and jeans, what, what the constitute as a whole, uh, you know, it was, it was a little ripped today, but, you know, yesterday, but, you know, so it's, it's always going to be a non, it's going to be always going to be an issue whether you have standardized dress and you tell kids what they can wear, or you have a regular dress code and you tell kids what they can't wear. The only thing is every year we just add on more stuff based on the rap song and everything else on what you can't wear. Uh, so, like I said, the, the dress code has nothing to do with the academic ability of the student. It does have something to do with how they feel about themselves. I agree with that. So, you know, it's, it's one way or the other. I don't have a dog in the fight because at the end of the day, we won't, I'd rather have kids in class and not focus on clothing and more focus on what they're trying to learn. Logistically, if there is a change to the dress code yes. for JISD, and we're approving, supposed to approve the new handbook in July. Yes. Logistically, can we craft a new dress code for Jasper if we decide to make a change Absolutely. in that two-week term? Absolutely. The, 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 the writing is, is already there. Uh, whether you take pieces of here and there, you know, using, uh, we're going to make recommendations for principals and have the principal come together. Uh, one of the things, you know, people were actually thinking that the dress code was different from a few all the way to the high school. The only difference was that the kids didn't have to wear a belt and have a shirt tucked in at few. So, I believe that um, we could have a recommendation um, to it will be outside of the code of conduct as well as inside the code of conduct because we need to approve the dress code first before we approve uh, the code of conduct. We want to make sure. Um, and then if we don't approve the dress code, we can approve the code of conduct upon the changes and corrections that need to be made to the actual dress code. So we can get we can get that all done and then of course the next part is that what is the publication, what is the, the message we need to get out so that the parents, uh, we have, there was a couple questions about uh, tax-free day, that's not going to be a big issue, but really what information we're going to get out to parents and how we're going to blast this information out so that everyone's aware that there's a new dress code for uh, JISD okay. for the upcoming school year. Bullet point two is inconsistency of enforcement where we lack and number two is is when a teacher, administrator, what, then they've got to have that support. And we cannot fail there. Uh, the dress code is not going to work no matter what. Exactly right. And, you know, when these kids are traveling on extracurricular events, they are representing Jasper. School, school board, community. <coughs> and if they walk off that bus or whatever, it doesn't matter if it's a sporting event or what. I think they should be well-dressed and well-groomed. There's nothing that says we can't have a separate code for travel policy. If you're, you know, there's no reason we can't have that. Well, and typically when you have groups that are traveling for FFA, you don't have those issues. Uh, you have athletics, you don't have those issues. Uh, because there's a standard of dress we expect when, you, when you're competing. Um, you know, when you're competing at that. 
uh, there's going to be a sense of pride when you going through that. You know, are we going to get to the point where we have blazers uh, with the J on it? I don't think so. Back in the day, you know, <laughs> back in the Stone Age. <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to see how the weather is. It's a small leather sweater. <laughs> when, back in the back in the 80s, we all were issued a polo shirt yep. that had a bulldog on it, and that's what we rode the bus in. That's what we traveled every game in. There was, there was two comments when I was uh, playing at athletics or extracurricular is you, you play like you practice and you play like you look. Mm -hmm. You hear it now on there. Images everything. Images yeah. everything. And we yeah. talked about the, we, we had somebody just ask us about um, dances. We, we have something there. And we also talked about when you have awards, what is the expectation on dress for awards. And so, all these things can be addressed. Um, the question is, anytime you make rules and regulations, of course, there's always going to be a consequence. And so, how do we deal with those things? Because again, if you change the dress code, you're still going to have people violate it, and it, they they just look for it. It's just part of it. And I think that's still going to be. Like I said, we wish we could be very consistent. We wish that the kids would just abide by the dress code, and that's not a factor in the, in the classroom. Well, when I went to school, all twelve years here. There was a dress code. And a gentleman by the name of Dal Coleman just made the club to tell me what I And he doled out the concert for Yes. And so we had no dress problems. <laughs> well, let me ask you another question because I think this is probably going to be another issue that come, comes up. It's about backpacks because that's not actually in the dress code. Okay. Yes, it's yes, it's clear. 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 yes, I know. But is that the same thing as some of these other ones that, that are outside our district that are not standing out dressed? Do they even go into details? I didn't even notice anything about that. There's no reason why we can't still keep the yeah. backpack. Yeah, we can I, still Well, that's, that's the, but, but the, see, I, I agree with that, but we need to make sure we're very clear on that because if the other ones are not addressing that, but you know, you don't want to throw the baby out of the bathwater. Right. So, if we want to keep the, because that's more of a safety and security. Yes. But then there's also the issue of if it rains, then everything that's in your mesh backpack is going to be. Well, and that was a big issue as a teacher at the high school. I can tell you they were allowed to carry their athletic bags, which then became their backpacks. So half the kids got to bring their athletic bags around with them with their stuff. And so that's that's why I'm asking the question. Is that something um, that we want to stay? With, or is that something you want to get away, to, get away from since you're going to buy a little backpack poncho? Whatever, whatever, whatever we choose, it's going, to, it's going to be some of these folks in here that's going to be the enforcers. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool to be able to see what's in the backpack, but I think there's, there's the pluses and minuses to it. And, uh, and if you've seen some of the purses, I mean, we're talking like suitcases and everything. Well, I guess as uh, thinking of what we voted on earlier, we're adding a school resource officer. And now we got two, and that should be a somewhere to help us uh, on the dress code. I would think, because I live with you. I will say is, I mean, you can take like Mr. Davis. First part of last year, I heard he was he was sending people for dress code like that, and uh, you know now he's uh, these principals and teachers have enough. We got to utilize our staff. I mean, he can't, he's not going to be arresting people and putting and breaking up fights every day. Okay, so we got to utilize it. Well, I think that John, that will be school, school discipline and not necessarily the, the school resource yeah. officer is not supposed to hand out school discipline. Yeah. Well, it's only in cases of going outside the reasonable calls uh, we have. Uh, no, it's probably called we have reasonable calls and we work together with the school resource officer. Their job first is to be more of a resource than an action officer. That's has always been defined to me. I don't necessarily know if that actually true. Is that how it's supposed to be defined that way? Does job description say other duties as being necessary? That's kind of Are you asking me about that? Yeah, I was asking. The school resource officer, the school based law enforcement, not to enforce the rules of the school that the principal is supposed to enforce, such as backpacks, dress code, things of that nature. He's there for security, threats, and other things to enforce school-based laws that he'll go to training for. Yeah. That as well as um, educate. They, they're supposed to do part of, part of our job is supposed to do education as well. Yeah, so they partner with the law enforcement teacher and things like that. One yes. more thing. Uh, 
just if we can make sure that we also include spirit wear. Currently, the kids can only wear spirit wear on a certain day, which has definitely affected the fundraisers for the booster club. And we need to make sure that you know, they can wear those spirit shirts whenever they want to. If it's purchased from the school, it should be able to be worn at the school. I think you take away some of the standardized dress that that opens that up. It takes away some of the natural. It opens that up because what, now you can't. Well, if you put it on the kids, if you put it on the kids and tell them, hey, you're going to go with this dress. If you violate it or if you have any problems out of this dress, hey, we're just going to make a standardized dress. <laughs> two kids. I have a junior and a senior this year and um, neither my son carries a backpack at certain points um, but my daughter doesn't carry one at all mm -hmm. um, and she hasn't throughout the whole time but they don't have as many books to carry around as they used to so you know I, as far as a clearer mesh I have no problem with the clearer mesh backpacks. Um, the high school girls don't a lot of them carry those Vera Bradley backpacks. They do. They do like and those. They're not clear. Uh, and they're, they're not. not um, but they. And they're not supposed to carry them. They yeah. But they they're do. not. Well, those, so, that's what I was saying. You know, um, what harm are we? I mean, what I guess what are we trying to alleviate by those? You know, clear mesh. I know, obviously, you know, the weapons, those kind of things there. But if someone's going to bring a weapon, they're going to bring a weapon. Yeah, so they're, they're going to have it somewhere. Is that not what? I mean, what's your opinion? You being law enforcement. Well, it's mesh, clear, and really so clear it's intent, intent. And your policy making, you got to give law enforcement a shot at, at being able to protect the campus whenever we show up. Mm -hmm. The standardized dress, we eliminate threats by everybody wearing the same thing. If it's a rainbow up there, we don't know where it's where and what's what. Uh, so how do we dictate who's doing what in the building? So your dress and your backpacks need to be in line. Uh, clear and mesh does help. Uh, but if a kid's running by us and we're looking for the threat, we can care less what's in that backpack. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the principals and the staff, they need to know, hey, you know, Officer Hart, this kid with this backpack, said, I saw it in his backpack, then we can go right there and target that. So you know, what's safety should mirror this policy, not what they like. Okay. So y'all can really Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Connor. Uh, our next item is to uh, go into closed session if needed. Do you have a motion? So moved. Uh, Second. Can I? Second, uh, Mr. Webb. All in favor? Raise your right hand. 7 0. We will turn at 8 07 into closed session. 